that's got something to do with it. Yeah, we see. All right, so just remember, since we don't have any power, that means we don't have any air. So if I get too too long up here, you might get a little hot. So we'll open a window. Keep going. All right. <laughs> Nobody will fall out. Yeah. <laughs> Ale vishe meneho, oh ho, oh ho. Ale kineh mehe, eh, eh, eh. Ale jevi ko sepoti, jemi ni veli, viti kishi no hele pa. Ale veki munoho, koleje ke namini kishe ke veti vita. Ale peti ti, shelevi ti, shelevi si ni si. Ale kone he, kiki ke he, li iti ne mine. I vi sepoti, jeni vili, vite peti, sho, sho, sho. Ele ke mene hi ko ho ho, ele veti bi ti 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 ti, ele shu no mo no no no, ele ke ni mi i hi hi hi, o li je vi se vi ti vi ti. Amen. Barbara, you want to open us up? Father, thank you for your word. It is life to us and health to all our flesh. You are our provider, Lord. You do meet our every need. We thank you, Father. Help us to continue to seek and search your word, Lord. Find out your will in our lives. We thank you for the pastor you've blessed us with, Lord. Thank you for your anointing on him. Thank you for your anointing on your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive from you through David this morning, Lord. And we thank you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, <coughs> um, so, we get used to things, don't we? Yeah. Electric. Okay, we get used to things, and then when it's not here, you 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 have to you have to adapt, right? Yep. Right. You have to adapt. Yep. Um. God has adapted at everything because He's already defeated everything. He's already defeated everything. Everything that you're gonna ever gonna go through, every trial. You can even think about that you're going to go through. He's already gone through it. So I'm going to continue a little bit with the calling on your life. And it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little bit from last, last time we were together. But it's also going to be focused on 
What happened tomorrow? Um, tomorrow is what we, most of the people in the church know, is 9-11. Okay? For most of us in here, we will never forget it. And to some that don't know it, and if they're in here and they don't know it, then they're going to need to be taught about it. Right? Because they didn't know it, so they need to be taught about it. The same way we need to be taught about the Word. Right? right. Amen. Because we didn't know it until we got taught about it. Right? That's right. So... I want to focus on the men and it wasn't just on that day but everything that happened that changed America in the next 20 couple years afterwards. The wars, the all those kind of things, right? But I want you to focus on the character and the calling. Okay? I want you to focus on that. I'm going to try to remind you of some things to, that we're going to find are a sure picture of who God really is. Okay? So... Can anybody remember the first glimpses of everybody saw the the first plane hit the tower, right? So you, you can you can picture it in your mind's eye the, the telecast coming on and and um and the first plane hit the tower and everybody was in shock at that point. Nobody thought anything. Okay? It wasn't apparent at that point what was going on. It was like, did a, a Cessna fly into the Twin Towers? That was some of the first reports. Nobody, nobody knew, right? So until they started getting some, because there was radio silence on the airplane, so nobody really knew anything, right? And then, so, the first plane hits the towers, okay? And I want you to understand that people that were called, people that were called to do a job to protect you and I ran to it. without knowing what was going on. Had no clue. The second plane hits the towers, right? The people that are called are still gone. They're still gone. The towers are on fire. People can't breathe that are stuck in the building. Anybody above that floor that was devastated, the people couldn't breathe. Toxic. Okay? We only saw what was on the outside of the building. Can you imagine what it was like inside the building? That's all we saw. But it was it was awful. Right? What we saw coming off the tower. But that is on the inside of the building also. In an enclosed space. That air wasn't getting in, making it fresh air in there. Right? So you can imagine. So people chose to throw a chair through a window and jump out. And the people that were called 
to protect you and I still win. Toxic or not? Toxic or not? So then we hear about all the other planes, right? The one going to the Pentagon. Just missed, by the way. Just missed. They were, they were planning more damage than that. They were planning on pinpointing right in the center of it, which it would have got all of it. Right? That's what they were planning on. Um, and then we hear about the one that was supposed to go somewhere else that nobody really knows. It's all guessing where it was supposed to go. Could have been the Capitol. Could have been the White House. Either one. Both would have been, you know, a statement. Right? Both would have been a statement. So you hear about, you know, the people afterwards. But all this time, okay, people that are called to protect you and I are going. Right? Mm -hmm. So the first tower falls down. And I could see just muck everywhere, right? People are running through the streets trying to run away from it. And they're just filled. Their faces covered in dirt. Right? And one of the guys doing, and the girls doing that were called to protect us, they're still running into it. They're still running into the fire. And we lost a lot of people in the ones that serve on that day. And then we lost more afterwards that were called to serve in the war that preceded, or wars. Right? So I want you to think about what you were called to do, what you were called to serve, how you were called to serve. <clears throat> Because I mentioned this morning that one chance, one opportunity, one, one chance to make a difference in somebody's life could come to you and you choose not to act. So who is it important to? Ah, it wasn't really important. Was it? Is it? The called. We are the called. We are the called. We are the church who was called by God. We. All right? And I know that we may not I, I, I want you to understand I please do not take this the wrong way. <clears throat> but the firefighters and the first responders that run into that building that were running up them steps when that tower fell down. We have to do the same thing. We are the same thing. We have to run into the fire of the world. We are their first responders. And if we don't respond, Is it worth it? We are their first responders. If we don't teach people, if we don't teach people, you know that there's not even 
and and they're take, trying to take most of the history out of schools now. Yeah. They're trying to take most of it out because some person along the line said it was bad. Well, guess what? I had to learn about bad history when I was in school too. But you know what that does? Is it tries to give you a decision. Oh, well, there was some good history and there was bad history. What do I want to be a part of? They're even taking that choice out of school. If you don't have a choice to make, see, then you can just stay this side. Do you see how cunning he is? Do you see how cunning he really is? First Corinthians. Hopefully I won't stumble through this too bad since my light is not working. <laughs> Your light is working. Mm. I might have to read it over here. Sorry. I think I got tears in front of my glasses. So let every man 1 Corinthians 7.20 Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. You were called. Amen. You were called. You may not know your full calling yet. And I've said before, <coughs> you, may not, you may not stay in that calling all your life. You may get called to a different calling. You may. Ephesians 1.18 The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what the hope of His calling. The hope of His calling and what the riches of glory of His inheritance is in the saints. His calling. You were called by Him to do His calling. And His calling is for you to be a first responder to the world. Amen. Because they're not going to fix themselves. Because mm -hmm. he's got the wool pulled over their eyes. And I've talked about this before. <coughs> We've talked about that the definitions of words have been changed. But the definition is still true. It's just a lie. Satan knows this book. He knows this book. So what he tries to do is use a little bit of it and throw some lie around it to make you believe it. All right. I just I just see those towers coming down and it was just like you ever heard the expression my heart sank. Yeah. And it was just like my heart just went Right out of my body. I'm like, what just happened? What just happened? You know, we've been very fortunate. We've been very, very fortunate. Because the wars have not been in our home soil. And now they brought it to our home soil. Right? And you know why? The attitude changed in Congress and the House and the Senate. Do you know why the attitude changed? Because they knew it too. That they brought the fight to our own soul that's never been really done before. I mean, yes, we've had some wars back in the day, right? But they weren't affecting us right here. God has protected this land. Do you realize that? How he has protected this land. 
Do you know some of the things that we have in, in just in our land that we call United States of America are some of the best sites in the world? But there was a group of people that came to this country and founded it and believed in one person that thought and they thought he could change it all. And guess what? He did. Amen. Until we started running them up. And you look at, if you go read the original Constitution, God is the whole way through it. And guess what, guess what man has done to that? Mm -hmm. Messed it all up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. What's the one that they keep quoting about separation of church and state? What? Yeah. Who do you think founded the country? Are you serious? We're going to allow him to, we're going to allow to use his name on our currency and take him for granted. Do we trust him? <laughs> the world don't, I can tell you that. So who do you think is going to stand up for America? Do you think it's going to be the world? No. Or do you think it should be the church? Because the church is the one that needs to teach the good news. The good news. Right? Second Timothy. I don't think I read that one, did I? No. Second Timothy 1 9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Did you hear that? You were called before. You were even created. You know, I've heard, I've heard this that, and Lord, forgive me if I say this wrong, but some people believe that there's only a few called. God said that he put enough faith into every person, every one of them. Well, if there's only a few, guess what? He wouldn't have done that. So that means everybody, every person that was created, which is all of them, because we didn't make ourselves, we're trying, but we'll mess that up too, okay? All right, we'll mess that up too. Don't, don't get me wrong, we'll mess that up too. But every person was created has the faith that needs to be to get saved. <coughs> Every person. Okay? So, that's him. He's the one that did it. He's the one that did it. First John, I mean, uh, John 15, 13. I have my bookmark in the wrong spot. Hold on. John 15, 13 says, Greater love. Greater love hath no man than that this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Whether you want to or not, you are called to do that. And 
believe me, when you have to do that, he will give you all the strength. That's right. He will give you all the strength. So there's no use to worry about it. That's right. You don't need to worry about it. Because right. he's going to give you everything you need. I am telling you right now, when Timothy... When we have to go through the things that we're going to have to go through, we are going to have to go through things. We are going to have to go through things. But God will give us a way out. He will give us a way out. And if somebody's throwing stones at me, and I look up and he's standing there, Holding out his hand to me, that's a way out. Amen. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. When we have to lay down our life for somebody, he's going to give us the strength to do it. Well, I don't know if I can do that, Lord. Yes, you can. Yep. Yes, you can. You can do it. Yes. Amen. You remember Thomas? Mm -hmm. Thomas the train? Mm -hmm. Do you remember him? I think I can. Huh? I think I can. Does anybody remember Thomas the train? Yeah. Yes. Huh? Poor little Thomas. Huh? Mm -hmm. And he got wore out. But then he got some faith in him. Didn't he? He got some faith in him. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. I know I can. Right? That's all it takes. Start believing in the one who created you. That is able to take care of you no matter what situation you're going through. He is ready, willing, and able. No matter what situation you're going through. He is ready and willing and able to take care of you. First John 3. And I'm going to close with this. Hereby perceive... We the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for, our friends. for the brethren. Now, I didn't write that. He did. He just wanted me to preach it. <laughs> And I did what I was supposed to do. But now it's my turn to do what he told me to do. And is go out into that fire. That's world. Go into the fire. No matter where it looks dangerous or not. Don't worry about the consequences. Well, what about wearing a gas mask? Or what about wearing this? Or what about wearing that? He will give you every tool that you need to go walking into the fire. Amen. And I'm going to leave you with this. There were some people thrown in the fire because they believed on God. Right. And when they were walking around in the fire and somebody saw how many? Four. four. Well, how could they see four? There was only three in there. How could they see four? Son of man. Because God was right there. Amen. The whole time. 
He didn't leave them. He didn't forsake them. He walked them through it. He walked them out of it. And when they come out the other side, they forgot about it. And the reason I say they forgot about it is because they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. Amen. So they didn't have to think about what they just went through. It was already gone. Amen. That's the difference between God taking you through something and you taking yourself through something. When you come out and God's taking you through it, you aren't even going to have the smell of smoke on you. You're not even going to have a burn on you. You're not going to have none of that. Because he wants better for you. Amen. I want to go back to the what I asked this morning. Who's been stressed? Okay? Well, that stress leaves today. We have a God that's more powerful than stress. Amen. He's more powerful than anything that we're ever going to face. Because he's already defeated it. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you're in control. No matter whether we have power or not, Father, you're in control. It doesn't matter. You're going to take care of us. We thank you for that. And Lord, we just ask you to bless this day, Father. We're not going to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got its own cares. We're going to focus on today. We're going to get through today. We're going to get through today with you. And Father, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Church, thanks for hanging in there with me. Hallelujah.